We have the latest on a powerful nor'easter taking aim at the northeast. Here is a live look of Boston tonight. Some Missouri politicians have criticized mask wearing in school, but do they affect children's ability to develop and learn? We're talking with a pediatrician to get the facts. And I'm tracking some mild temperatures over the next few days, followed by a big storm that could impact us next week, giving us rain, possibly some wintry weather. I'll show you the potential impacts coming up. ABC 17 News at 10 on KMIZ starts now. Parts of the Northeast are bracing for a potentially historic and dangerous winter storm. Thanks for being with us. I'm Lucas Geisler. Here's a live look at a snowy New York City. You can see it there starting to come down. And I'm Deborah Kendrick. We will have more on the Nor'easter and its potential impacts in just a few minutes. But first, here in mid-Missouri, winds have slowed, but bitter temperatures continue to hang over the area. We'll shake off some of the cold this weekend before our next chance of winter weather arrives by midweek. Storm Trek Chief Meteorologist Jessica Hafner is keeping busy tonight. She's tracking it all for us. Hey, Jess. Yeah, already starting to see those cold temperatures settling in across mid-Missouri. We are down into the single digits across northern Missouri, down to about 10 right around Macon, down to 18 right now in Columbia. Jefferson City, one of the cold spots as well, dropping down right now to 13 degrees. We're about 14 in Fulton. This is right where we're going to stay going into the morning. Low to mid-teens across the area with clear skies as high pressures overhead. We're going to see light winds tomorrow in the morning, but it should pick up a little bit into the afternoon. From the south, though, that'll send us into the 40s to around 50 degrees. So hopefully you can get outside and enjoy that. Lots of sunshine tomorrow. Sunday, it's just a touch cooler. I'm tracking another front that'll be moving through from the north. And then next week, we'll turn our attention to Tuesday. We'll be tracking another area of low pressure that'll spark some shade hours off to our south during the day as temperatures will be above freezing. Cold air, though, will quickly be moving in by Tuesday night. If this low pressure stays just to our west, there's a better chance of seeing more rain and wintry mix. But the farther east it tracks, there's a better shot that we could see some accumulating snow by Wednesday. I'll show you the hour by hour forecast for next week and, and later in this newscast. All right, thanks, Jess. And Columbia City run overnight warming shelter is currently open downtown. That temporary shelter at the Wabash bus station will stay open till 6 tomorrow morning. This time last week, people gathered outside the facility calling on the city to raise the low temperature threshold from 9 degrees. Now, the city did that, raising the opening temperature to 15. Some activists there wanted it to open when it was as low as 32 degrees. In a release today, the city said the warming center's resource for folks unable to access other local emergency services. A spokesperson said the city would continue to work closely with other emergency shelters in Columbia, calling them the preferred option. Here's a list of those resources and where they're located or how to get a hold of them. For more on the cold weather resources across mid-Missouri, head to our website, abc17news.com. Now to the dangerous nor'easter taking aim at this hour. You are looking live at Boston. And again, that hard to see New York City tonight. Authorities there and in several other states are warning of life-threatening conditions. States of emergency declared up and down the East Coast. ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano has the latest from Boston. A potentially historic storm taking shape right now off the coast of the Carolinas and taking aim at the northeast with blizzard warnings expanding now including much of northern maine all the way down through the delmarva peninsula long island and parts of connecticut historic snowfall amounts uh, potentially shaping up several ingredients coming get together to make this happen during the day on saturday heavy snow will be falling across parts of new jersey and through manhattan i mean the big cities i-95 is going to be a mess if you live in the snow zone please don't try driving because the plows are just not going to be able to keep up with the amount of snow coming we'll see two to four inch snowfall rates at times and then it'll be blowing sideways 30 to 50 mile per hour winds along 995 higher than that amounts across eastern new england and the cape that's where we'll see the power outages that's where we'll see the heaviest snow because this thing will bomb out it will rapidly intensify during the day tomorrow and eastern new england, new england will get the brunt of it a good swath of six to twelve inches of snow slicing across parts of new jersey manhattan up through central connecticut and massachusetts but 12 to 24 inches plus across eastern massachusetts 
Areas just outside of Boston here could easily see 30 inches. The mayor of Boston declaring a snow, snow emergency. We're going to be digging out out of this storm throughout the day on Sunday and then into next week. Rob Marciano, ABC News, Boston. Now, for her expert take on the system, we're going to go back to Storm Trek Chief Meteorologist Jessica Hafner. And just like we've been hearing, blizzard and winter storm warnings are in place for almost all of the Northeast and New England. So we were chatting earlier. When was the last time some that area saw something like this and how does it compare? Yeah, so typically we see a couple of nor'easters or at least these types of storms a couple times per year, but we usually don't see them at this strength. Maybe once every couple of years. The last time we had one this strong was actually just about one year ago where parts of New York and Boston got 18 to 24 inches. Some of those same locations under the gun already. I want to show you the radar too, where we're starting to see some of that snowfall coming down. As you saw at the top of this newscast, already seeing some snow in Boston and parts of that in New York as well. Typically, we see a northeast or nor'easter. It's within about 100 miles of the east or west coast of the Atlantic. They usually intensify a little bit more as they get closer to New England and bringing heavy rain or snow, high winds and coastal flooding. Again, we have these a couple times a year, but usually not this strong. This is what we call a bomb cyclone. It's all about the pressure drop and they're classified by a 24 millibar or higher pressure drop within the center of that storm in a 24 hour period. So it's kind of like a hurricane when it rapidly intensifies from a category one to a category three in that 24 hour time frame. It's a lot of power there. <laughs> yeah, those storms. I mean, it's interesting to think about them like as hurricanes, like mm -hmm. in those wind mm -hmm. speeds too. Let's talk about Boston specifically. It's going to get a lot of the impact here, at least expected to. No stranger to snow and cold, if anyone is from that area originally. You expect it, but two feet, Jessica, how does anyone even prepare for two feet of snow? Well, it's hard to wrap your mind about that because right. typically here in mid-Missouri, we're only seeing a couple inches at a time, but already starting to see the impacts there in Boston. There's a live look right now. Some of that snow is starting to come down. National Weather Service put some of these advisories and warnings out over the last couple of days, so they've had a few days to know this is coming. It's going to have a big impact in all the transportation departments knew this was coming. Of course, those early heads up always helpful in these situations. Okay, Jess, one more question here. So the wind, we've been talking about the wind and how powerful it's supposed to be, 80 mile per hour gusts in some areas. Can you talk about the impacts that the wind can bring after the snow is done? Yeah, so typically when we're thinking that strong winds, we're talking tropical storms, hurricanes, or even thunderstorms, and those are usually sustained or at least isolated wind gusts. These are sustained winds. They're going to be impacting areas that have had several inches of snow, and the type of snow is going to be fairly light, that really light, fluffy snow, so it's going to make it tough to see visibility is going to be a problem on the roads even after the storm has passed so good advice from officials in those local areas to stay home another thing people are going to have to deal with are the wind chills as i advance this into the day tomorrow anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees below zero are the feels like temperatures after the storm passes oh goodness okay <laughs> jess thank you we're going to give our viewers another live look tonight here is that again new york city skyline you can see that snow coming down abc 17 news will keep an eye on this storm all weekend long and we'll bring you updates on air and online and back in mid missouri in the return to learn tonight some republican politicians in missouri claim masks cause more harm than they help in schools but one local doctor that we spoke with is saying otherwise abc 17's hannah falcon is live after asking a pediatrician if masks help students stay healthy hannah mask mandates in schools it's been a hotly debated topic recently Deb Lucas, one person that is very much against mask mandates is Attorney General Eric Schmidt, and he claims that these masks are causing mental health and learning problems in students. There's no data to support it. Masks are, in fact, ineffective. But we are, no, we are learning more now about the psychological and social and learning challenges that come from these sorts of policies. After Attorney General Eric Schmidt filed 45 lawsuits against Missouri schools for active mask mandates, including Columbia Public Schools and Jefferson City Schools, many have wondered 
Do masks have a negative impact on children's learning and mental health? No, it doesn't slow down children's development. I mean, Dr. Kristen Soul works with autistic children. Soul told me that most children don't have problems wearing masks, but some on the autism spectrum may be uncomfortable with things touching their faces and need extra help with masks. In those cases, then that child and, and their family should be working with their teachers and their therapists to see what makes sense to keep that child safe. Schmidt points out the rise in mental health issues since the beginning of the pandemic. Got psychological issues, got mental health crises on the rise, especially for teenagers. And so this stuff has to stop. But Soul says children do better mentally when they're able to attend school in person. So we know we got to keep them in school. But now we also have to think about how do we keep them physically safe um, and trying to reduce the number of infections in our communities, a really important thing for all of us to think about. And masks are one way to do that. Columbia Public Schools temporary mask mandate is set to end next Friday. We asked CPS if they would extend the mask mandate and we were told that the superintendent would make that decision closer to the expiration date. Reporting live in Columbia, I'm Hannah Falcon, ABC 17 News. Hannah, thank you. Jefferson City Schools mask mandate will end when schools move out of the yellow protocols, which can be tracked on the district's online COVID-19 tracker. Coming up on ABC 17 News at 10, where the news comes first. After the break, we're checking in with local health care providers to see where the demand stands for COVID-19 tests as Missouri sees fewer new cases reported this week. And in recent weeks, we've seen several cases of officers being hurt or killed while on duty. We're digging into the data, and we have an update on two officers hurt near St. Louis. And I'm tracking some mild temperatures over this weekend, but we do have an impactful storm heading our way next week. I'll show you the updated future track coming up.